Hello, I'm Christopher Joyce and I'd like to read you an extract from the chapter of The Creatures of Chichester, the one about the edible aliens. It's 2055. Aliens flock to the city of Chichester to visit the restaurants that now fill the streets. But some of the visitors are the tastiest aliens in the universe and they have gone missing. Fabia lives above the jewellery shop in South Street with her pet budgies, Sparkle and Topaz. Can they save the scrumptious aliens from the pie factory? Button, Stitchley and the other creatures in town come to their rescue in this futuristic tale of greed and deception. Chapter 1. They come in peace. The spaceship was the shape of a large donut. It had flickering lights and made a strange buzzing noise as it hovered over the cross in the centre of Chichester. We come in peace was written on the side of the vessel in big red letters. Underneath this was written, please don't eat us. It was the year 2055 and the city had been named as a place of special interest. Not many of the larger towns had been preserved after the viral war of 2040. Earth was now a favourite holiday destination for beings from across the universe. They loved to fly or walk around the old city walls and visit the crumbling cathedral in the centre of town. But mostly they came to eat. A large landing beacon had been placed on top of the cross with a big flashing parking sign pointing towards the bishop's gardens just behind the cathedral. Tour guides would meet at the cross to hand out translation devices to the visiting aliens before taking them on a walking, slithering, gliding, flying tour of the city. The pilots of the flying donut got the signal it was safe to land and found a good parking space just next to the cathedral. The aliens inside were super excited as they put on their disguises before leaving the spaceship. Like many aliens, they were chicken shaped. They had four eyes and their feathers were a pale pink. They smelt of pizza, fish and chips, chocolate ice cream and strawberries all mixed together. They were without doubt the tastiest aliens in the universe. Fabia's dad was from Turkey. Sometimes the other kids in school would make clucking sounds and tease her that she was part bird. She soon learned to ignore them. She realised that they were just jealous because she looked more exotic than they did. Her skin was a lovely coffee colour. Her dark eyes looked like melted chocolate. Fabio was quite tall for an 11 year old and was always putting goal when they played football. She loved kicking the ball around and being outdoors as much as the guardians would allow. After the war had ended, the Guardians had been asked to look after Earth to make sure that the remaining two legs did not destroy it completely. Nobody ever saw the Guardians or knew where they came from, but they were kind and made sure that everyone had enough to eat and drink, even if it was only three pills a day. Apparently these little purple pills had all the goodness and vitamins you needed to keep fit and well. They tasted of cardboard with a hint of mint sauce. Fabia's pendant buzzed. It was her dad calling. He appeared as a fuzzy hologram in front of her. Hi dad, how's the power station coming along? Hi Fabs, good thanks. The Guardians are very pleased and say the solar panels are the best they've ever seen. What's that you're wearing? They're just shorts dad. Mum got them from the market last week. Well they're too short. Go and change them. I'll speak to your mum later. Fabia tugged on the legs of her shorts, pretended to wipe away a tear, which made her dad laugh. OK, you win, but you're growing up so fast, I hardly get time to see you. I should be home in a few days. We'll catch up then, and I'll buy you a nice frilly dress or something. Uh, dad, you know that's not going to happen, but it would be good to see you. Can you bring me back a camel? Yeah, yeah, we'll do fabs. What sort would Madame prefer? One hump or two? Fabia giggled at the thought of taking a camel to her school. Her dad continued. Gotta go, as I'm due back at the power station in five clacks. Love to your mum. The fuzzy hovering image of her dad dissolved.
All that remained was the spinning logo of the holophone sponsor and a message that read, have a nice day, may the guardians be with you. Fabia clicked the off button on her pendant and strolled over to her budgie's cage. She opened the door to let them out. The birds perched on her finger as she gently lifted them up to her face. She loved sparkles, dark eyes and bright yellow face and adored the sea blue plumage of Topaz. I miss Dad, but we hope that he'll be home in a few months. Mum says that after this trip, he could be home for good. Sparkle and Topaz had heard differently and wished they could tell her so. Like all the creatures of Chichester, they could speak to each other. It was like speaking your thoughts. They had tried to train the two legs to do it, but with little success. But it meant that the cats could share what they'd heard with the dogs. They could tell the mice who told the spiders. In fact, everyone was speaking about the rumours sweeping across the city, except the two legs, who had no idea what was about to happen. <laughs>